Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to pull a vacuum on your car's air conditioning system so you know that you're leak free, at least from the vacuum point of view, and then you're ready to recharge the system. So I'm just about done with a frame off restoration on this car, uh, which included uh, replacing some of the air conditioning parts. I'd already replaced every air conditioning part except for the evaporator uh, about seven years ago. So uh, I did put a new compressor in. This is the seven piston sandin. I had the five piston before, and uh, I also replaced the high pressure hub, um, accumulator, low pressure switch, and a few O-rings when I had my uh, frame off restoration taking place fall of 2022. So now it's uh, winter 2022. Still buttoning some stuff up, and air conditioning is something that I wanted to try to do myself because. Um, you know, I'd have, to, I'd have to take time off of work to bring the car over to a shop, um, you know, and, and do I trust that they're going to do it the same way that I would do it? Are they going to pull a vacuum long enough? Um, you know, just kind of one of those skills that I've always wanted to learn. So I'm kind of learning as I go and through a little bit of trial and error, I think I figured out a pretty good way to pull a vacuum on the car. So um, the thing is you want to be able to know whether or not your vacuum truly is holding. And for a lot of us, we're probably using kind of junky stuff from like Harbor Freight. Okay, so these are Harbor Freight manifold gauges. And going down here to a Harbor Freight, uh, the classic brand Pittsburgh, the vacuum pump. Uh, so I've got the vacuum pump here also. So anyway, last night, uh, you know, I pulled a strong vacuum on the, on the car. Um, you know, for probably about an hour and a half. And, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're seeing uh, that you've got, you know, 30 inches of vacuum here. And certainly you want to see that there's no vapor coming out of here anymore. Because if there's vapor coming out, that means you're pulling vapor out of the system. And if you've still got vapor coming out 30 minutes later, you probably got a leak. So you're pulling outside air through the air conditioning system. Uh, you know, turning it into vapor because of the vacuum, lowering the boiling point of that moisture, and then blowing it out of this exhaust. So anyway, uh, you know, what can happen then is after you've pulled the vacuum, even if you've closed, you know, the gate, like the uh, these two valves, and you've left these two open so that you can monitor the pressure here, you might see that the vacuum is dropping or you're losing vacuum. But you don't really know, is the car leaking? Or is the manifold leaking or is the hose leaking you know it's not the greatest quality stuff here um, you know i found right out of the box um, you know i had to make sure that i tightened every connection on here it was all you know questionably loose uh, you know so I, I tightened everything up again myself and made sure that um, you know it's as good as i think it can be um, you know the next stage after vacuuming is you can also pressurize the system with nitrogen so I do have a nitrogen tank here that I borrowed from work. I've got a regulator for it, and I need to get one little fitting that lets me connect this hose to the regulator. Um, these air conditioning lines use a fitting called Acme M, which is a type of a flare type fitting uh, that uh, you can't find these kind of fittings in you know typical hardware stores. And I had no luck in Kansas City finding that kind of fitting at any like air conditioning supply stores either. But fortunately, uh, Master Cool, I think it is, they, they make a fitting that does this. And I was able to order that on Amazon through Master Cool's Amazon store. So I'll have that tomorrow. So I just want to make sure that I had a good vacuum. So here's what I'm going to do. First, I want to make sure that I've got a strong vacuum inside the gauges before I open up the cores here to compare if I had a vacuum loss overnight. So, need to make sure that these are closed. And I, I just put these back on. You know, after I pulled my vacuum last night, I popped these off, you know, just to be 100% sure that I can attribute any loss of vacuum to these Schrader valves and forward from there on. So, I'm gonna put these back on. Okay. Make sure it's tight good these are still closed but now what I want to do is I want to pull a vacuum first in my 
yellow hose that connects to the vacuum pump. So I've got both of these closed to start with. Okay, I want to suck all the humidity out of the yellow hose. Okay, so I'm going to turn my pump on. So right now, the only thing that's getting vacuum is my yellow hose, because when you close these two valves, it's blocked from going here. So only right here is under vacuum. And you can kind of tell when you've achieved vacuum because the sound of the pump changes and it sounds kind of quiet. It's not really like pop, pop, popping anymore. Okay. So now I've got a strong vacuum in the yellow hose. So now I'm going to open up the gauge set. You can kind of hear the vacuum pump sound change. So, you know, I'm pulling vacuum on the high side right now. Eventually it would bleed through to the low side through the orifice. And you can see that it is, it is starting to happen here. But you can also open this up right away. All right. So now I've got vacuum in my gauges, but I don't have any vacuum going beyond these valves because they're closed. So my hoses are under vacuum, but I'm not pulling further vacuum through the Schrader here. Okay. So anyway, you see I've got good vacuum, we got 30 inches. So now I'm gonna close these valves, okay? Because when I turn the vacuum pump off, I don't want to bleed vacuum out through the vacuum pump. All right, these are closed. So I'm gonna turn off the pump. And I could watch these hoses here, or the gauges here to make sure that they're not moving. You know, I could wait three or four minutes, but I've already done that. Uh, so I know that I'm not leaking anywhere between these valves and these valves now. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I want to compare the vacuum in the car to the vacuum in the hoses. So if it's equal, that's perfect. If it drops just a teeny, teeny bit, which it's going to do because I did this two or three times while I was testing this and... Uh, the first time I did it, it didn't, it didn't drop. It's just a demonstration. Um, you know, but if the gauge here dropped significantly, that would mean that I lost a lot of vacuum overnight while it was sitting. So I got a leak I would still need to try to find, probably with nitrogen. So anyway, now I'm going to open up my low pressure side here, and I'm going to watch to see what happens to the vacuum gauge. So I'm opening it now. There we go, it's open. So it dropped a teeny, teeny, teeny bit. Uh, that's because I did this, like I said, three or four times while I was testing and getting ready to make this video. So I'm going to do the high pressure side also. All right. So now the car and the gauges are one, and the gauge is showing me the true vacuum inside the car. So it hasn't dropped uh, significantly at all. So I feel like I've got a strong, leak-free, AC system right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and close these again because I'm just working on this thing. It's kind of funny you turn these opposite to close them because you're lifting up on the Schrader pin. All right. So hope that helps you out. You know, like I said, the next step, if you had a leak, would be to uh, hook nitrogen up and pressurize the system. You can hook it up probably at like 150 PSI first and see if you can find something leaking, see if you can hear it hissing. Um, I got some of that big blue spray that you can use to spray like all over, you know, fittings and things like that to see if it leaks. Um, I'm going to experiment with the nitrogen once I get that other fitting here and I'll make a video about that too to show you how to do that. Um, but uh, if you didn't have any leaks, what you could do now is you could charge the air conditioning up. I'm not going to be able to do it right now because it's literally winter outside and I need to have the garage door open so I can have the car running and the exhaust coming out and I'm just going to have to wait until spring. So what I'm probably going to do for myself is I'm going to charge it up with nitrogen uh, just so there's no moisture in the system uh, you know and then it'll, it'll just sit there until spring you know and then I'll evacuate it again and charge it up finally. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching the video. And if you got any questions, you can always uh, reach me directly.